In the A message from a Muslim to a Catholic priest part 1. In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful. Dedication. With complete submission and love, I acknowledge your help O Allah. Without your guidance, this humble work would not have become a reality. If it is worth dedicating, please bless it with your acceptance and guide anyone who reads it to the right path which leads to you O Allah. Forward. This humble work is the result of a dialogue between me and Father. John, a European Catholic priest. During my travels to different countries, I have often noticed widespread ignorance of Islam, especially among European Christians. Therefore, I seized every opportunity to explain to them what Islam is. My wife was a Catholic, but with the help of Allah, the Almighty, she found the truth and embraced Islam in 1982. My wife was a Catholic, but with the help of Allah, the Almighty, she found the truth and embraced Islam in 1982. As I was attending the funeral ceremony of my father-in-law, I had the chance to talk to the parish priest who got very fascinated when he heard my explanation of some facts about Islam. Shortly afterwards, I decided to include that dialogue in a small book. Nevertheless, I did not intend to tackle the points raised in the dialogue in detail. The idea behind the book is to clarify some major points about Islam in order to enlighten those who have poor knowledge of Islam or have misconceptions about it. I present this work with love to anyone striving to know the truth. About Islam. O oh Allah I have completed this work seeking your mercy and forgiveness. I believe that you are the only true God who deserves to be worshipped. O oh Allah grant your blessings upon me and all my brothers and sisters in Islam. Preface Dear Father John I have intentionally addressed you at the opening of my letter with a transliteration of an Arabic phrase that Muslims use to greet each other. It means peace be upon you. I would like to thank you for everything you have done. Talking to you was great pleasure as you were open-minded. What encouraged me to continue the dialogue with you is your interest to know Islam, Saudi Arabia and Arabic. I do not blame you for not knowing much about our religion and culture due to the unjust and negative propaganda by the Western media as much of it is owned and controlled by Zionism. In this brief book, I will try to shed light on the main issues of our religion that directly affect and regulate our way of life. I tried my best to present these issues in general, avoiding going into details, as it will take more time. 1. Belief in the oneness of Allah Muslims believe in one God, the only true and one God that deserves to be worshipped. Nothing is associated with him in worship, no son, no daughter, no wife, or any partner of any kind. Our God is Allah, the creator of the entire universe. Allah is one of the 99 names of his beautiful names. Moreover, in Arabic, the word Allah is always singular and has no plural and it is the most common name for our Lord in Arabic. The testimony of Islam states that there is no deity truly worshipped except Allah alone, and Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is his servant and messenger. The exact words of the first part of this testimony in Arabic is La ilaha illa Allah, there is no deity truly worshipped except Allah alone. In fact, this statement negates the existence of any other deity besides Allah and it confirms that Allah is the only true God who is alone worthy of being worshipped. It rejects any association of partners with Allah in worship, which is called shirk, and it requires full disbelief in any being or thing that is worshipped besides Allah, be it a human being, an animal, an idol, a star, or anything else. All acts of worship such as prayers, invocation and reliance must be directed to Allah alone. The Holy Quran states that, although they were commanded only to worship Allah with sincere devotion to Him, being inclined to true faith, and to establish prayer and give zakah. That is the true religion. Albina, 5. The criminality and stubbornness of the Jews and the Christians is evident, in that they have not been commanded in the Zaran. Except to do those very things they have been commanded to do in both their books, i.e. worshipping Allah alone, refraining from ascribing partners to Him, establishing prayer and giving in zakat. So whatever they have been commanded to do, is actually the straight religion in which there is no deviance. Albina, 5. Those who sincerely worship Allah, following the dictates of the testimony of faith, will certainly lead a happy life as it is only by worshipping Allah alone that hearts find peace, tranquility and real satisfaction. Allah also says in the Holy Quran, Whoever does righteous deeds, male or female, while being a believer, we will surely grant him a good life, and we will surely reward them according to the best of their deeds. Anal, 97. Whoever does good deeds in accordance with the sacred law, whether male or female, while having faith in Allah, we will grant them in this world a good life.
by their being pleased with Allah's decree, content and guided towards righteous actions. And we will reward them in the afterlife in accordance with the best good deeds that they used to do in the world. Anal, 97. Moreover, the Holy Quran states that whoever invokes another God besides Allah, for which he has no proof, his reckoning will be with his Lord. Indeed, the disbelievers will never succeed. al muminin 117. Whoever calls upon another God besides Allah for which he has no proof, and this is the case with every God besides Allah, the reward of his bad action is with his Lord. As he is the one who will reward him for it by punishing him. The disbelievers will not be successful in attaining what they desire and being saved from their fears. al muminin 117. In another ayah, Allah says, There is no compulsion in religion, the truth has been made distinct from falsehood. Whoever rejects taghood, false gods, and believes in Allah, has indeed grasped the strong handhold that never breaks. And Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. Al-Baqarah, 256. No one is forced to enter the religion of Islam, as it is clearly the true religion and there is no need to force anyone to believe in it. Truth stands clear from falsehood. Whoever rejects all those things that are worshipped besides Allah and frees himself from them, and has faith in Allah alone, has held on to the strongest rope for salvation on the day of resurrection and which will never break. Allah hears the statements of his servants, knows their actions, and will reward them accordingly. Al-Baqarah, 256 The meaning of the second part of the testimony, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Allah has sent Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, as a messenger to people of all races, classes and colors. And he made it everybody's duty to obey him as the Holy Quran states, say, O Prophet, O people, I am the messenger of Allah to you all. To him belongs the dominion of the heavens and earth, none has the right to be worshipped except him. He gives life and causes death. So believe in Allah and his messenger, the unlettered prophet, who believes in Allah and his words, and follow him, so that you may be guided. Al-Araf 158 Allah tells the Prophet, peace be upon him, to inform people that he is the messenger of Allah to them all, both Arabs and non-Arabs. Allah alone controls the heavens and the earth. There is nothing worthy of worship other than him, glory be to him. He brings the dead to life, and causes what is alive to die. People should have faith in Allah and in Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Prophet, his messenger, who cannot read or write, and who came only with what his Lord revealed to him in order to guide them to what is good for them in this world and in the afterlife. Al-Araf 158 The Holy Quran was revealed to him. Allah sent down to him the greatest of his divine scriptures, the Holy Quran, which no falsehood can approach it from the front or from behind. A revelation from the one who is all-wise, praiseworthy, Fusilat, 42. And indeed, it is a noble and protected book. Falsehood in the form of subtraction, addition, change or distortion cannot come to it directly or indirectly. It is a revelation from one who is wise in his creation, decree and legislation, and praiseworthy in all conditions. Fusilat, 42. He was the seal of the prophets and the final prophet sent by the Almighty Allah. Therefore, there will be no prophet after him, as evidenced by the ayat in the Holy Quran. Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah is all-knowing of everything. Al-Azab, 40. Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, so is not the father of Zayd, therefore his marrying his wife is not impermissible for him when Zayd divorces her. However, he is the messenger of Allah sent to the people and the seal of the prophets, there is no prophet to come after him. Allah is the knower of everything, nothing is hidden from him from the affairs of his servants. Al-Azab, 40. Belief that Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is Allah's messenger entails believing in all the statements he made about everything. This includes the following. 1. Matters relating to the unseen world, such as the last day, the eternal bliss in paradise and the everlasting punishment in hellfire. 2. The events that will take place on the day of judgment. 3. Stories of past nations and what happened between the prophets and their people. It also entails doing the acts he enjoined and avoid the acts he prohibited. This includes the following. 1. To comply with his orders, fully convinced that he did not speak of his own desire and that what he came with was nothing but a revelation revealed to him, as the Holy Quran states. Whoever obeys the messenger has indeed obeyed Allah. But anyone who turns away, we have not sent you, O Prophet, as a keeper over them. Al-Nisa, 80. 
whoever follows the messenger by fulfilling his instructions and avoiding his prohibitions has actually followed Allah. If anyone turns away from following you, O messenger, do not feel sad about it, because I have not sent you as a guard to watch over what they do. I am the one who will watch them and hold them to account for their actions. Al-Nisa, 80. 2. To avoid the acts he prohibited, such as erroneous practices and bad manners. Fully convinced that he only prohibited us from doing so due to divine wisdom and for our own benefit even if we may not be sometimes aware of such benefit. 3. To be certain beyond any doubt that doing the acts he enjoined and avoiding the acts he prohibited will benefit us greatly and bring us happiness in this life and in the hereafter. As the Holy Quran states, and obey Allah and the Messenger, so that you may be given mercy. Al Imran 132. Obey Allah and His Messenger by following what He instructs and staying away from what He has prohibited, so that you may gain His mercy in this world and in the afterlife. Al Imran 132. 4. To firmly believe that those who disobey Allah's Messenger will suffer a grievous punishment, as the Holy Quran states. Do not consider the Messenger's summons to you as your summons to one another. Allah surely knows those of you who slip away hiding behind others. So let those who disobey His command beware lest some trial may afflict them or they may be afflicted with a painful punishment. And nor, 63. O believers! Honor the Messenger of Allah, when you call out to Him, do not call Him by name, e.g. O Muhammad, or the name of His Father, e.g. O the Son of Abdullah, like you call one another. Rather, say, O Messenger of Allah, O Prophet of Allah! And when he summons you for a general matter, do not treat his summoning like that of each other in petty issues, rather, hasten to answering his summon. Verily, Allah knows of those of you who leave covertly without seeking permission. So those who go against the command of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him should fear that Allah can afflict them with trials and afflictions, or with a painful punishment they cannot bear. In Nor, 63. The testimony also entails worshipping Allah in accordance with the Prophet's instructions. This implies the following. 1. To follow his example, we ought to follow the Prophet's sunnah, or practice, including his words, deeds and tacit approval, in all aspects of our lives. The Holy Quran states, say, If you love Allah then follow me, Allah will love you and forgive you your sins, for Allah is all-forgiving, most merciful. Al-Imran, 31. O Prophet, say, if you really love Allah, then follow what I have brought, on the inside and the outside. By doing this, you will gain Allah's love and He will forgive your sins. Allah is forgiving and merciful to those who repent to Him. O Prophet, say, follow Allah and His Messenger by fulfilling His instructions and avoiding His prohibitions. If they turn away from the command, then know that Allah does not love the disbelievers who go against His sacred law and the instructions of His Messenger. Al-Imran, 31-32 2. Islam is complete, Allah's Messenger, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, conveyed Islam and all its laws in full. Thus, no one is allowed to introduce any practice in Islam which the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, did not approve. 3. Islam is relevant to all times and places. Islamic rulings mentioned in the Holy Quran and the Prophet's Sunnah are relevant to all times and places. For no one knows for certain what is best for people except Allah who created them in the first place. 4. To follow the Prophet's Sunnah For one's good deeds and devotional acts to be accepted by Allah, they have to be done in accordance with the manner prescribed by the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. As the Holy Quran states, say, I am only a man like you, it has been revealed to me that your God is one God. So whoever hopes for the meeting with his Lord, let him do righteous deeds and associate none in the worship of his Lord. Al-Kaf, 110. Say O Messenger, I am only a human like you, to whom it is revealed that your true God is one God who has no partner, namely Allah. Whoever fears meeting his Lord should do actions which conform with the sacred law, being sincere to his Lord in them, and should not associate any partner to his Lord in worship. Al-Kaf, 110. Bid'ah or innovations in religious matters are strictly forbidden. Those who introduce an innovation in religion, an act of worship which contradicts the Prophet's Sunnah, such as offering a prayer not sanctioned by the Prophet. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, blatantly go against his command and will have the innovation they have introduced rejected, as the Holy Quran states. Do not consider the Messenger's summons to you as your summons to one another. Allah surely knows those of you who slip away hiding behind others. So let those who disobey his command beware lest some trial may afflict them or they may be afflicted with a painful punishment. And Nor, 63. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, also said in this connection. 
he who innovates something in this religion of ours that is not of it will have it rejected. Al-Bukhari and Muslim. 2. Belief in Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Muslims believe that Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, is the last prophet and messenger of Allah to all mankind. Also, Muslims believe in all the messengers and prophets of Allah from Adam to Noah to Idris, biblical name Enoch, until the last prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. This includes the belief in Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Jacob, David, Solomon and the rest of messengers, peace be upon them all. Moreover, one of the six pillars of faith in Islam is to believe in all. The Prophets For example, if a Muslim claims that Jesus was not a prophet, this will render him or to be out of the bounds of Islam. Muslims firmly believe that all the prophets were sent to their own people or nations at certain periods of time throughout history except Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Who was sent to all the humanity and whose message is the most comprehensive and the most appropriate to the entire globe and is relevant to all times. Allah, the Almighty, says, the messenger believes in what has been sent down to him from his Lord, as do the believers. All of them believe in Allah, his angels, his books, and his messengers, saying, we make no distinction between any of his messengers. And they say, we hear and obey. Grant us your forgiveness, our Lord, and to you is the final destination. Al-Baqarah 285 The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, believes in everything that was revealed to him by his Lord, as do the believers. All of them believe in Allah, all his angels, all his books that he revealed to the various prophets and all his messengers that he sent. They believe in such messengers without making any distinction between them. They say, we have heard your instructions and prohibitions, and we obey you by following your instructions and leaving your prohibitions. We ask you to forgive us, O Lord, for in all our matters we return to you alone. Al-Baqarah 285 In your Gospel, you will find a story of the Canaanite woman, who was running after Jesus, peace be upon him, when he was walking with his disciples. She was trying to learn from him, but he did not listen to her. His disciples urged him to answer the woman but Jesus said, No, I am only sent to the lost sheep of the children of Israel. However, these are not the exact words of this story as mentioned in the Gospel. But they clearly show that Jesus was sent to the Jews only to complete the message of Moses and was not sent to all of mankind. On the contrary, we must believe in the universality of the message of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, as it is confirmed in his hadith, I have been given five things which were not given to any amongst the prophets before me. These are Minus one Allah made me victorious by Ah, by his frightening my enemies, for a distance of one month's journey. Minus two the earth has been made for me, and for my followers, a place for praying and a thing to perform dry ablution, tayamum. Therefore my followers can pray wherever the time of a prayer is due. Minus 3. The booty has been made lawful for me, and was not made so for anyone else. Minus 4. Every prophet used to be sent to his nation exclusively but I have been sent to all mankind. Minus 5. I have been given the right of intercession, on the day of resurrection. Al-Bukhari. This also implies that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, was sent from Allah as a mercy to the universe. Allah, exalted be he, says, We have not sent you, O Prophet, except as a mercy to the worlds. al Baya, 107 O Muhammad I have not sent you as a messenger, except as a merciful one to the whole of creation. This is because you are distinguished with aspiring for the guidance of all people and their safety from the punishment of Allah. al Baya, 107 this qualifies the entire mission as a mercy intended to all people. The context is also important since this declaration came to us in the general context of calling to Islam, to wholehearted submission to Allah, to pure monotheism, and to righteous acts of sincere worship before the coming of the promised day of resurrection. Why?